Oh, we're saving this for posterity now. All right, this is going to go on YouTube, so we're recorded. Uh, okay, so I'm sorry to make you uh, do this again. Jonathan, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay, hi. Everybody at Capcom Unity, it's good to see you all again. I think the last time we were together was the FBC3 launch party. Uh, my name is Jonathan Klein. I am uh, Vice President of New Generation Pictures. I produce and direct a lot of the voice work for video games, and particularly Capcom games. Uh, we've done Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, and now, coming out today, Street, Super, Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Finally. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah. And a little title, I think, it's called Street Fighter Cross Tekken. We're watching a little bit of it now. They can see it in the corner. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about, well, I don't know how much you can say about Cross Tekken, but... Uh, can't only say what's been said already. So what can you say then? Can't say how many people are in it. I can't say who's in it at this point. Uh, and I can't say who's acting in it. But the cast is really cool. That's so what I can't say. You can't tell us who's acting in the uh, current character set that we see in front of us now yet, or no? Um, or I'm am not I asking sure. too much? I, I think I don't know. I, I think Mr. Ono would have to basically <laughs> give the AOK -okay about that. I could just say that I think a lot of the people uh, will, uh, who watch it and play the games uh, will not be disappointed with the cast. Uh, we've been very true to both games, I could just say. Awesome. Very cool. So, tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on in Arcade Edition then. So, uh, I mean... Well, we got two new characters. We got right. Yan and Yoon. Uh, they're being voiced by Johnny Young Bosch and Todd Habercorn. Okay, cool. And cool. Uh, So, tell me a little bit about them. Like, uh, I'm trying to think what other... I mean, do they have a lot of previous work that we might recognize them from? Oh, well, uh, Johnny... Oh, God. Johnny's, like, been in everything. I think we get, there are so many fans out there who just can spot Johnny in a second whenever they hear his voice. And Todd Habercourt, he's a voice actor from Texas. He's been in a ton of anime. Yeah. And uh, we've used him in some other video games from some oh, cool. other companies that will reign nameless, obviously, because yeah, yeah. this <laughs> is the Capcom Ustream. And, you, can, uh, you can tell us what other stuff he's been well, in. He we don't mind. In, you know, he's in Rude Factory 3 for us in uh, okay, Lupia, cool. Estopolis. But, uh, we, uh, but Todd, Todd's a great voice actor. And we've always wanted to have an opportunity to work with him. And right. he, uh, the, the, he loves Street Fighter. He wanted the and he auditioned for the role and came out and did it. Awesome. Very cool. So uh, what about for Marvel? Like, can you talk about anything uh, additional for Marvel that we didn't know about? Uh, all I know is I know there's some new, uh, like, I think there's some new downloads, I think, online now. Isn't there? Is yeah, we, we had the, uh, the the Jill and Shumagora at DLC. And uh, I don't know if we ever talked about uh, the voice for Jill. Oh, well, Jill was done by the, uh, Kari Walgren did the voice of Jill. Okay. And uh, Kari's been a ton of stuff from, uh, you know, from all over the place. Anime, video games, all over, cartoons. You'll hear her in everything. So uh, Kari's wonderful. I love working with her. And every opportunity I get to work with her is just a pleasure. Awesome. And Shuma was done by Paul Dobson, who's also the voice of Doctor Doom in the game. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, do you guys have any questions for uh, Jonathan that maybe we can ask? So, we're watching the live uh, the live chat on uh, CapcomUnity.com slash Electronic Entertainment Expo. I know that's a long URL. I love so. Deadpool's voice. As I love Deadpool's voice, too. Nolan North was awesome as Deadpool. Uh, he just, in the booth, he cracks you up. He'll, he, he's just, I wish we could to play all the outtakes that Nolan did. But sadly, uh, I don't think they would be G-rated or PG-rated or well, PG-13 rated. What we could do is if if we have the ability to put some of that stuff out, we could always do a special on Unity and then age get it. Yeah, it would be. It would be fun. Uh, I'd have to this, see. This we is could, me asking. Yeah. Please. Well, <laughs> I'd have to fun. get his permission too. I mean, he did oh, that right, in, right, in, right. In, in the confidence of basically it was just between you me right, and me and right. stuff like that. I don't I think see. he wanted to go public. <laughs> <laughs> but he would leave. He would leave a lot of messages for all the other voice actors because he knew everybody else who was in the right. game. It was just. It was just funny as hell. So, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, is this Who's your favorite character in Street Fighter's Tekken? Uh, 
Well, we I mean, all of the, are you playable or just fun to watch and listen to? Both. I say, Give us both. Uh, I like Cammy. I like playing her. Yeah. Uh, a, on the Capcom side. Uh, my favorite on the Tekken side, I can't reveal yet. It's Fair just enough. They, and, but uh, in terms of the, the voice actors, uh, well, I would say on the Tekken side, uh, I love the voice actress of Jindina. Yeah. And uh, she's amazing, and uh, hopefully you will all recognize her when you hear her. Uh, and I love Laura Bailey, who does Chun Li. She's just she's just a riot to work in the booth with, basically. So, is she done Chun Li in our past games? She's a, she was been Chun Li since Super Street Fighter Four. As she's Chun Li in Marvel vs. Capcom Three, which is a little different than the Japanese, because I know they flip flop between uh, Ayari Ikasa and Yuko Miyamura, like between the the, cro- the crossover games and the core Street Fighter games. Right. Interesting. Favorite Marvel vs. Capcom 3 character? Uh, gosh. Just to square everybody over, I'll say Modoc. <laughs> uh, no, I, I like all of them, but. Uh, He's a cool character. Though. Yeah, Modoc's fun. It's just, you know, who wants to play with the big head, basically? <laughs> but, uh, Modoc, uh, well, in terms of actual playability, I dig working with, like, a team up of, like, Doom and. Uh, Deadpool, yeah, and uh, either uh, basically Ryu would be like a good team matchup. I like that. Someone's asking Hold here. On, what? Uh, someone's asking where's Mega Man's voice? Where's Mega Man's voice and what? <laughs> exactly. The, I think they might be talking about Zero. It's zero. I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know anything about it one way or the other. Can't say I worked on it. Can't say I didn't work on it. But uh, I honestly don't know anything. Gotcha. So, uh, oh, they're asking, no, why isn't Mega Man there? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, why isn't Mega Man in uh, VC3? Uh, my guess is, you yeah. know, they didn't feel he was ready yet to make his appearance in there. But we got Zero. Zero is good. He's yeah. different, but it's still it's still a Mega Man. And uh, again, Johnny Young Bosch did the voice of Zero in that game. So oh, cool. Very cool. So um, basically, I, I have no problems with Zero. I mean, yes, Mega Man is a classic character, and he certainly deserves to be in I, I mean, of course, you'd love to put him in everything. Like, you put you in everything, basically. Right. But, you know, there are a lot of different Mega Mans out there. They wanted to sort of share the love. There's only one view, except for Evil View, which is right. an arcade edition. So, is it the uh, the same voice actor for Evil View in arcade edition? Yes, it's Kyle A. Bear. He's doing both you and Evil. He can, do, he can turn on the Evil really well. So awesome. It, it's nice, because Kyle is one of the most dynamic voice actors out there. You know, he Kyle is this... One of the sweetest and most gentle guys you ever meet, basically, when you see him. But he, when you vi- see him visually, he's like this six foot two, <laughs> bulking big guy, you know, you know. And you're like, uh, you know, you think like he plays like the heavies and the bad guys, but right. he has like, he can do like, the li- he has such great dynamic range, he can do like the light voices or the deep voices or the heavy voices. So it's kind of neat because, you know, view is kind of mid range, and then when he goes into right. the evil view, he's like down in there, right? But That's Kyle's cool. great, and he just has so much fun in the booth. And, you know, he's now, I mean, you, we've worked with him on, like, you know, we've worked with him on, on Street, on Super, on Arcade, and Marvel vs. Capcom. So, I mean, he's got the character down pat at this point. So what about uh, Oni? Oni, well, we get Dave Mallow, who did the voice in all the other versions of the game. Right. It is also both Akuma and Oni. Oh, game. okay, okay. So, cool. yeah, we, we, we try to use the same voice actor for it. I mean, the problem is, you know, Akuma's already down there deep, and then right. you want him to go even, like, more sinister and crazy. Right. Right. The problem with that is that that voice really, like, is a major strain. Just to do Akuma is very strain. Right. Or something. To go even, even more extreme is just like, wow. So we were, like, fortunate that we didn't have a, a hell of a lot to do for him on Arcade Edition. As Odie, that it was like we could get through it within a reasonable amount of time. Otherwise, we usually have to break up his sessions into two hours because otherwise he's like, I can't 
talk anymore. Right. Get some nice throat spray and tea. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, some people are asking, uh, what other games can you talk about that are uh, or Capcom games? Have you done any Capcom games outside of the uh, the fighting games? Unfortunately, no. I I, I have. I would love to. Give me any. Uh, and let's. Uh, it's a hit to you guys at Capcom. Give me anything you want to give me, because we're more than just fighting games. Awesome. The, the joke used to be, of course, that, uh, well, not just you, but every game we used to work on had the number four in it. It was like, it was like give us a game with a four in it. It's like we had Time Crisis 4, Star Ocean 4, Super Street Fighter 4, uh, you know, all the, it's like, so as long as there was a four in there, we were, we were ready to do it. Cool. It's a crazy coincidence. Now, I'm like thinking about it, I'm like, that is a Oh, and Final Fantasy 4, we did that too. So it was like, massive coincidence. That's awesome. So, uh... Let's see, a bunch of questions that have nothing to do with this All or right. we can't answer. the voice actor selection process? That's a good question. Oh, uh, yeah. Do we hold audition? The answer is, it depends on the game. Like, for Street Fighter uh, 4 and for... Uh, uh, we did hold auditions for all the roles. Right. Uh, and that was a lot. We had, like, I think about 110 people read for, you know, the original 25 characters that were wow. in the game. <laughs> and so, you know... You th- it took a while, but we got we got through it. So they had a big choice with that. So we did hold auditions, and Capcom, uh, the producer Mr. Ono, and uh, you know his, his associates who were you know both in the U.S. side and, and the Japan side, right. listened through the auditions and basically chose the characters they thought were best. And I mean, we gave our suggestions, of course, when we said, "Oh, this person's great. This person's great. This person's great." But it was like basically we had to build it from scratch. But once we got to say Marvel vs. Capcom three, we already had the established actors for those particular roles. Right. Now when it came to the Marvel side, Marvel actually chose the cast for all the Marvel characters. And basically, oh, really? uh, Marvel, Chris Baker, and T. Q. Jefferson, and and the the staff at Marvel wanted to mainly use uh, the voice actors who had previously done the character before in either the cartoons or other video games. So we had a lot of people who worked on the uh, Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes, or we had uh, people who had voiced it in earlier animation or other games. So that that brings up Deadpool to me again. So did Noah North do previous Deadpool Yeah, work? he did it in the Hulk versus, uh, he appeared, in, in, he's appeared oh. also in a couple other things. I know. I think in Marvel Ultimate Alliance it was John Cassier who did it. Yeah. And but but Nolan has done Deadpool in the cartoons. Very cool. And he appears, I know, in other places besides Hulk versus as the Deadpool. But yeah. That's that's pretty cool. So what about some of like the the, the Marvel characters that wouldn't have really had much previous work, like Shuma? Uh, I think they just like. I mean, yeah, Paul Dunstan had done Doctor Doom in the Fantastic Four cartoon. Right. And I think they just knew he was very dynamic and done lots of different voices before, so they just said, "We want him to do Shuma." I don't think he was Shuma in the previous in NBC two. Did, uh, did Shuma have any voice? I don't think that was like more about blah 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 blah. blah yeah, so I was gonna say I don't know if anyone actually did the acting for it. But they Marvel Marvel said they wanted Paul to do it. We were like, great, and, you know, it, it, it was one less. Thing. But unfortunately, Marvel didn't let us do. The casting for that, and, and I had a lot of disappointed actors who were like, "I was just like, can uh, I read for this guy? Read for like, no, I'm sorry, it's already been cast." Uh, so. But you know, who knows? Down the road, maybe there'll be more characters down the road, and uh, they will be able to cast some of them. So who knows? yeah, that would be cool. But I mean, even still, I, I gotta say, at least from a uh, from a fan's perspective. I think the voice acting work that that was in Marvel is fantastic. I mean, oh. either way. Yeah. Well, I, I have to give credit to the actors. I also have to give credit to the voice director, Talison Jaffe, okay, who uh, he, he's been with us for a long time, and he, like me, are are huge comic book geeks. So yeah. we spend a lot of time making sure the characters sound like the characters. Also, we did get permission from both Capcom and Marvel to do a little tweaks here and there because. Uh, like Hulk's tag-ins. Oh yeah. We got. We were the ones who wrote those because originally it was just Hulk was just gonna say everybody's name as it was. We say Hulk doesn't say things like that. Right. Hulk talks in Hulk speak. You know, he calls people. So I went through all my. I have like old Hulks from you know back back <laughs> in the 70s and, and stuff. I just went through and looked for every time the Hulk had referred to other Marvel characters in different ways. 
you know, usually you just base it on what they look like. But then we started thinking of what names he would call people by Capcom standards. So, right. So when we got to like Beautiful Joe, it's like Buddy Helmet Man because he does have Buddy Helmet. Oh, buddy Helmet. But uh, so who wrote all that? Was that you? That was that was me and Talison. Basically, we, we, we spent a lot of time doing that. Same thing with Spider-Man calls uh, Wesker Albert. We wanted him to do that. We wanted it's like he loves to teach. Yeah, Al, like Spider-Man uses. Right his verbal barbs as much as he uses his fist to, right. to, to annoy, you know, to just annoy everyone, even the people who are on his side. So we wanted to have that fun. I think we had a few other interesting tag-ins for Spidey, but uh, I don't know what happened with that. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think all of them got in there. There's one, I think, I, I know they did the whole thing with Spider-Man versus Ryu. Uh, he, he had, you know, there was his Ryu says, like, I hate spiders, or you got a black belt, belt stupid. I had one written that was like, uh, hey, Karate Kid, Ralph Macchio called, he wants his outfit back. Oh, I don't know if we'd be able to get away with that one. <laughs> that would have been good, though. Yeah. I would have laughed. So, uh, let's see if there's any Why questions. Why Spider-Man say do your job? Well, I guess because uh, it probably didn't really work that well. <laughs> So here, here's a question then on that side. So with all the lines, uh, were those on the Marvel side, were those approved by Marvel? Oh, yes. It was a very actually literally down to the wire process where uh, Capcom would basically uh, give their basic idea of what the script was going to be. Right. I think it went to Frank Thierry, who was the Marvel writer, right. who would go through and write his lines and, you know, and, and polish it, clean it up, and make it the way, you know, to sound like Marvel characters. But then, of course, you'd have to go back to Capcom, and then Capcom would have to say, well, these are, you know, these are great for a comic book, but there are certain constraints for a video game, because you can't say... You know, when you're reading a comic book, you can have a huge bubble and have it say blah, 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 blah. In a video game, you can only say blah, blah, blah before, you know, something's supposed to happen and right. you won't have time to get through it. And so it got to the point where, it, it, so Frank would have to go back and edit it. And sometimes we'd have to go in there and throw in our two cents and, and you know, sort of polish it up. But mainly from the Marvel side, it was Frank Thierry's, you know, writing that made it work the way it did. But we would get... Stuff approved. Ever, ever Frank actually did the writing. I think he had to get it approved by the Marvel, you know, brass. As yeah, well. I think so. And then they would send it to us, and then it would go back to Capcom. Capcom would send it to us because we were like not supposed to really directly deal with Marvel as much as we we're supposed to deal with Capcom. Uh, the whole thing, although Marvel was like, yeah, we, you know, oh, just call us if you have a question. So they were very nice and very open right. to us about help, yeah, helping out and everything like that. And it worked out really well. I mean, we got along great with both sides, and it really helped. The Marvel gave us their input, Capcom gave us their input, and I think the results show in the in the final product, basically. Well, I mean, I I think it's fantastic. I can't tell you how many times, uh, you know, uh, friends of mine and, and myself when we're playing. Even when we're not playing, well, uh, there's so many memorable lines and quotes and like great voice acting that you you always try to mimic the voice of the line, too, right? And uh, it just sticks with you. Oh yeah, I, I think I, that's, that's that's a testament to the the fantastic work in there. Like, it, it, you find yourself repeating it outside of the game as part of the fun. Yeah, I, I agree that you know classic lines are always memorable, and I mean I think we lifted a couple of you know lines from, from previous games. Yeah, yep. we had we had uh, Nolan North do, as Deadpool make fun of Magneto from the old X Men game. Yep. Oh, yeah, uh, Magneto, welcome to die. You know, yep. Just just to make fun of that line, you know, and then of course there was the where's your curly mustache at line. The curly um, mustache thing was just a I mean uh, a, a tip of the hat to fans everywhere. That yeah, was I, a fan was that you at all? No, no, that was that was Capcom and, oh, really? and, and, and Marvel I think were both in on that basically. That that was perfect. That was really perfect. So, so what do we got? Any other interesting questions here? Uh, is Monster Co I have no idea about Monster Hunter, I'm not working on that. <laughs> Who loves me? They, I, I they know I they know I love Monster Hunter and I've been ignoring this question, okay. so Alright. Can you uh, talk about the voice for cut characters? Rumored. Frank, Doc Ock. Uh, I can't say anything about anything with regards to that. Hopefully, you know, if, there are, if they were recorded, hopefully they'll show up eventually and 
they weren't, maybe they'll think about them as a new idea. All right. He says, uh, Blight Shade says, do your imp impression of your favorite character. All right. Bathroom break! <laughs> or, I love me some pineapple! <laughs> oh, Deadpool. I hear bullets taste just like chicken. You know, some of his lines, I gotta wonder, like, I don't know, they, they feel so natural coming off on Deadpool. Well, like, Nolan, Nolan just, you know, he, he, I mean, Nolan just is Deadpool, I feel. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it, I mean, Nolan North is, is just one of those, like, consummate voice actors who just can do it. I mean, people know him and recognize him for other things. You know, he's right. Nathan Drake and all the, yeah. I, isn't he also, uh... Uh, shoot, what's his name in uh, Assassin's Creed? I think I think he's, he's in everything. Yeah, you know? it's like <laughs> it just says IMTV of it. And, 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 and. He was in uh, our Dark Boy game as Will, the main character. Oh wow! Well. Yeah, he's he's everything. It's like <laughs> he's like the Jai Young Bosch of the non anime stuff. Yeah. But anyway, well, I just expected else? thanks for answering it. Well, I didn't answer anything. But, it's all about it's all about uh, just talking to everybody on the stream. You do this enough to know that. You do the live stream with us enough enough to know that it's it's just about talking. To oh yeah, well last time I was on. We're glad you're stream, watching. Last time I was on stream, I confirmed that Helen Keller and Anne Frank were both in uh, Marvel <laughs> vs. Capcom three. Were you supposed to? Well, they were like saying, I was like, they just start spitting out stuff, and I was like. <laughs> And I was like, okay, yeah, Helen Keller and Frank are, and they were like, yes, Helen Keller and Frank are. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, Jonathan, thank you so much for. Oh, it was my on. pleasure. Please, guys, check out Street Fighter Four Arcade Edition. It's Definitely. out right now, right? That's how we get paid. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's well, out now. It's uh, DLC, and it'll be out on this soon in a couple weeks. Oh, so. great. Well, you know, I gotta get it myself. So, you know, uh, me but, too. But if I get an extra code, I'll send it your way. Thanks, appreciate <laughs> it. But. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably get it tonight and start playing it. Oh well, awesome! And, and get my ass kicked online by everybody else because I'm such a terrible. Uh, I'm not a button basher, but I'm like not skilled yet. I need to like bribe. Who's your main? I, I, what? Who's your main character? I usually made Cody. Okay. Because I just love yeah. Cody's Cody is probably one of the coolest I think super street right? yeah, uh, yeah. In, in the whole thing. But I just love you know bashing people with a crowbar and stuff like that. But I just usually get my ass handed to me, and I always said I would trade a, an appearance, uh, you know, a cameo appearance in one of the video games if I could get Daigo or, or, or Justin Wong to come and teach me how to play and not suck. <laughs> so you, the, the, the offer's still out there, so maybe those guys are interested, <laughs> give me a call. All right. Maybe they're watching. Maybe they'll see the recorded version after right. all. All right, all right. Thanks, all right. guys. It's good to see you all again. Maybe I'll be back tomorrow if you got the time. That would be great. All right. Well, we'll talk again. All right. See you, guys. See you. Get ready, because I won't hold back. You're going to be in a world of hurt. Leave it to a professional. Mission accepted. Fight! Are you ready? Fight! Ah! Hey! 